am a psychic channel, a medical intuitive, and a sacred lotus teacher, um, which means that I'm a spiritual teacher who teaches on the process of unfoldment and what that's like, what that means, how for us to actually unfold into our light. Um, so this is really, really cool. This thing, this macabre awesomeness that Stephanie has put together. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, so if you see me looking down or to the side, I do have some notes for what I wanted to share with you today. Um, so, but firstly, let's just um, kind of anchor into our heart a little bit and anchor into the breath. Just a very mini connecting within to ourselves, whether you're watching this live or later. Um, it's going to help us receive the information that's come from spirit a little bit clearer and more integrated. So essentially going within and just taking a few breaths and being comfortable in your own skin and maybe visualizing the breath going into the heart. Doesn't have to be complicated. So, here and now we're going to talk about the call to our universal heart um, and the ability, the power that's natural to that of holding love. With everything that is occurring in our world right now, um, we are really being called into higher and higher integrations of the higher self. Um, and this is really, it's like next level stuff, really, that's what it is. And um, one of those next level pieces, when I say that I mean like we are really called to disidentify, we are really called to unity, we are really called to these very high frequency states of being because the planet is doing what she's doing and growing and changing and shifting her energy and so we need to do that as well um, so one of the things that is shifting and coming into our collective awareness um, our collective consciousness it's always been there everything has always been there but sometimes with shifts and the surrounding energies the universal energies um, the access to certain things in our collective consciousness, our multidimensionality as a people, um, awakens and becomes more accessible. Um, so one of the things that's happening with that is that the universal heart has become much more deeply acceptable, um, uh, sorry, accessible to us. Um, and we want to talk about the universal heart and we want to learn to embody it and ingrain it and share it with one another and essentially be it. So the universal heart, it's sometimes called, um, you might relate to it as called the higher heart chakra. I've heard it called that. I, um, but essentially it is the heart in us, the evolution of us that is connected in a cosmic and universal way. As we all know that the heart center is kind of our center of the above chakras, the below chakras, spirit and earth, it's the meeting place. And the evolution, the ascension of this place, the next point of ascension, is for this to evolve into a universal heart that is more living in an awareness of its own multidimensionality, of oneness. Because with multidimensionality comes oneness. Whether you access oneness first or you access multidimensionality, these are inseparable. Um, and as we broaden our perspective as human beings and what it means to be a human, um, we are broadening into a perspective of universal identity, having a position in the uh, in the universe with other races, with um, you know the ones that everyone's heard about, Syrians, Pleiadians, etc. We really need to. Um, we're opening our eyes and our hearts to the fact that we are multidimensionality and we, we come from the stars and that we have this family around us and it's it's kind of like we've been um, 
it's so it's very weird when you think about it it's kind of like we are a country on a planet with lots of countries and we've all just been as humanity we've been pretending that the other countries and the other people don't exist and we've been just like not communicating with them not organizing with them not living with them yet we're on the same planet it's the same thing we're on the same in the same universe we impact one another um and anchoring into our universal heart is what allows us to really live this and like believe it tangibly when you practice this particular frequency to evolve that uh, your higher heart chakra to become your natural way um, I do have notes to the side if you see me looking here this is what I channeled from my spirit guides to help me further um, share this with you so the love center in you that is immovable the universal heart it is the echo of oneness it is the echo of God that's what I kept receiving about it is the echo of God in you and it is like a different temperature or a different frequency than our usual heart chakra when we're here we embody resonate and radiate differently and what we're called to at this time this concept of holding love and um, actually creating a deep unity Unity consciousness is where we're headed, but in order to do that and where we're at right now, the information, the awareness, the truth that's coming in is that we need to step into the universal heart so that we can hold it all, meaning we hold all of the, um, the duality that's here. And that is the essential like quality of oneness. That's what it actually does and is. Oneness doesn't try to make... Um, the shadow or something negative or something we don't like different it doesn't it's it doesn't do that it just says I'm here and you are me and I am you and there's this gathering and this holding quality in love and it's inevitable that it's just an inevitable concept or function that transformation happens within and being held in that kind of love um, so we want to really be that love in all the little ways and all the big ways that we can in our world right now. From like accepting the division in yourself and that you have parts and aspects of yourself that you may not like and um, creating a practice to hold that and accept that. At least beginning with acknowledgement that this is here and no longer fighting with. And then broaden that to your relationship with another person and then broaden that to our relationship with um, other groups of people and then broadening that to our relationship with other countries other races and then broadening that into the people that we really do not like that you may even have hatred for and this is where it comes for light workers about um, the people that are harming the planet or are not connected to spirit how can we transform this if we are pushing away and rejecting? It's not the correct energy. It's not the correct quality. So that's um, really, really important. Um, I also wanted to generally speak about the energy that's here because the, it weaves into this um, the applicableness of using the universal heart. And... Essentially, the energy that's happening right now, the degree of division, the degree of split or shadow, it's a purification. That's what it is. It's a deep cleansing process that we're happening. It's a split and a division that is going to get stronger and more obvious. Um, and But that is natural when the light comes in and it comes in to purify things, you know? It comes in to awaken us to what's already been in us that needs transformation. So to move steadily into even experiencing a deeper rift in our society, we need to have a steady anchor in our universal heart space. We need to practice peace and non-resistance to nature. I say to nature in that this is a natural process and you cannot resist what is natural to earth to a people to humanity to beings to universes it is natural for this to come up 
when so much light is hitting the planet. It is natural for us to go through a process of becoming aware of that splitting. Um, and we want to cultivate and know our own heart as the universal heart because it's going to take that level of ourselves, that awakening to your own, your higher consciousness and really becoming that to be able to hold in a non-resistant and accepting nature all that is here. Because our tendency as people, obviously, I mean, that we all know is to react. And especially when our survival-based instincts are being triggered, which they are going to be. That's what happens when we face um, divisions and wars. And when I say war, I don't just mean a big war. I mean with, with another person, just argument. Just um, seeing that in politics or um, groups of people, etc. We want to, we try to make each other like each other, but that's not what oneness does. Um, so I'm just taking the notes here. This is to really see when you anchor the universal heart, you really feel and become on a tangible level that you are a part of something that is greater than you you really notice and realize that you are and you've always been a song in a sea of symphony. You're just one song in the sea of the symphony of a whole people, of whole races, of universe. And it's to just broaden into this is bigger than me and I'm going to acknowledge that I'm a note in the song and to be harmonious in that as best that I can because every other person is me as well. That's what oneness really, really shows us. Um, yeah, and in order to really do that, we have to give room for everything to breathe. We have to be the breath that can hold it all and that can allow it all to be. Um, knowing that even as um, difficulty arises, in the background of it all, it's what we have always wanted. It's what we've been wanting to create. This is it. This is now. This is the time. We have to maintain that focus on the vision. That's what this part of this talk about holding love is. That aspect of it is to be in that broadened state that can see what's happening here for what's actually happening here and be in awe and amazement at the, the marvel and the beauty, the shift that's happening, it is like a miracle. It is a miracle. It is a congratulations to light workers, to people that have awakened. And we must believe that and hold the faith. My guides keep saying to me, hold the light, hold the light. And sometimes the only way that we can do that is to become more is to become more of the light and identify with that in ourselves um, because that's the truth um, and that's the shift that's created it's actually inevitable if you want to survive if we want to live as a people this is the inevitability of evolution it's to evolve spiritually it's the spiritual evolution that is survival of the fittest only in that we have to awaken into where we are going, where we are headed into the universal heart. Um, if we want to flow, if we want to not fight, if we want to live and breathe love. Um, so the next part I want to talk about the practice, the actual practice of cultivating or stepping into the universal heart. Um, when we want to do that, just like any practice really, it always begins with the same thing of um, closing your eyes, going inwards and connecting to a particular frequency or practicing a particular frequency. Um, in this case, the universal heart energy. Um, and we have to do this in order for it to be an experienced thing for us. Not really, I mean, it's good, but it's better for us to not just hear someone else talking about spiritual truths and things, but to actually cultivate it so we have an experience in ourselves. 
Um, so the reason that we do this is that so that we have a steady um, anchor of love in ourself, realizing that the dichotomy and the issues here and the duality is the thing that helps us fall out of resonance. So it's, it's like what I'm saying is we want to practice resonance, which is all we're doing here, really, if you're um, practicing your, your light. That's what we're doing. Um, and then we're going to talk about how to wrap that around what you're experiencing. Um, we're also going to do a light language activation, which is just essentially light that's going to help anchor that. It's just going to, it's like the light provides um, a particular tone, the same way that if I give you a rose quartz crystal, it's going to be more accessible for you to feel things like softness um, and peace and the qualities of that crystal. It's a very similar thing. Um, but because it's sound, it's even more powerful. Um, so, okay. If you want to hold the universal heart, essentially the first thing you should do is get yourself into alignment in the ways that you naturally do. I always suggest that people do what's natural to you. So, like for me, I like to sit down, close my eyes. The first thing I like to do is to anchor into the earth and anchor into spirit and circulate those energies and anchor into my heart. If you like to do that, cool. If you like to just um, breathe for like five minutes, you should do that or 10 minutes, whatever you do. If you like to flow and move, which I like to do sometimes, you should do that. Follow your light and follow your heart to teach you whenever you do any kind of intuitive process. If you like to light a candle that represents love to you, make it your own. Um, and then once you've kind of done that, we're gonna you move into a settled place of just being within yourself with the intention in your mind, or you can assert it like assert it out loud, which may be something like I intend to embody the universal heart, I intend to connect to the universal heart. You should also always use the words, the affirmation or intention that resonates for you as a unique being. Um, all that being said, it's totally fine to use a frame that's been offered to you. So we just essentially want to go within. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. When you do it, you take as much time as you need. And we have an intention to connect to or embody the universal heart. And then, like all of our intentions, we see if there's anything we can do to help that. I think that the best thing for this is to breathe light, visualize light or breath or both into the heart area into your like chest area. And then with your intention in mind, just like any frequency that we're practicing, we actually just allow it to arise within us. We actually have a faith in our own intention and we have a a trust in the background of our being that every frequency is available to us that every frequency is a part of us because you are a part of the God force that's the fractal of being that you are so when you're doing this with yourself you just want to sit quietly breathing into the heart and then allowing I allow my universal heart. I am here in my universal heart. Whatever gets you into that trusting place of my universal heart is already here within me. It's already something natural to me. And then you, we want to open to that frequency by just being and allowing. You can also call in or ask your guides and angels to help support you. 
to help um, help you tone at the frequency. Often our spirit guides, um, they it's kind of like they can hand you a frequency. Um, that's very natural. That's one of the ways that we interact with our guides, or even on like you're doing it all time unconsciously. But if in your request you may begin to feel a shift, even without your request. If you do this allowing process and you give enough time and you don't get pulled into any seeds of self-doubt of like sometimes people get pulled into like it's not working or something's meant to be happening if you can maintain just it's going to be here when it's going to be here you will begin to feel an energetic shift within you it may for humans we sense frequency as our um as emotional resonance so when a new frequency starts to come in you may start to feel emotions of love or of oneness and usually when you're practicing a frequency for the first time um, or just the first few times it is very subtle it's like water just trickling in and you just need to just hold and breathe and allow and maintain your focus and that trickle starts to build and it starts to build and it starts to build and eventually my guides are saying with the universal heart you're going to start to feel an openness in the chest area an openness and a lightness and it's my guides talking about how that quality will occur because when we move into that area of our being of our consciousness we start to move into a little bit more of a disidentification and disidentification meaning we are more aware that we are a soul, not a, like the idea I'm not Beck, I'm a soul. And so I broaden myself into that perspective. And so I will feel openness and lightness because the heaviness comes from our sense of identity, basically. Um, and everything that goes along with that. So the invitation here is for us to practice this frequency. And especially at this time, practicing on like a daily basis would be really good for everybody. Um, also want to do anything that is related to unity is going to cultivate this, whether you think unifying thoughts or you do a unity meditation, which I just created on my YouTube. So like that's going to be really cool if you want to use that. It's a light language unity activation and meditation. And I created it as a frame to kind of help provide a space, uh, help people get into the space of that unity, that oneness, and then essentially to receive that frequency. That's exactly, there's pockets in the meditation for that to happen, which is again another idea when you're cultivating frequencies. It can be really helpful if you use a meditation or something to give you a frame. Um, so that's really magic. And... Um, yeah so essentially the message right now is to move through this we want to cultivate oneness in ourselves we want to cultivate unity in ourselves and we do this by getting to know the universal heart we just have to get to know that part of ourselves and that's going to make it easier for us to step out of our ego and step out of reaction especially at this time which is needed and just to hold that resonance Hold the love. I feel and believe that that's the call for light workers right now, is to hold the light, hold the vision. Don't fall for all the the darkness and the shifts and the illusions that are happening right now. So, in the sacred isness, I'm going to leave us with a light language activation, um, and. This is, as I said, it's going to help kind of cultivate that frequency a little bit more um, in yourself. And we're going to end on that. So I'm just checking if there's anything else I need to share. Um, just that, so you guys know, my website is beckluminary.com, B -C -C -C, And I offer sacred sessions, channeling with your spirit guides and angels. And I'm a medical intuitive. I also have YouTube. Um, my channel is just B -C -C. As I said, free meditations, light language healing, and yeah, I also hope to do more events on the Gold Coast soon when everything gets a bit more available for planetary healing, as I feel that that's what our Earth is calling right now. 
And that's what we can give with the universal heart, is we can give. And that makes me really happy, to give to the earth and the universe, not just our world. So, light language activation. Just make sure that you're comfortable, firstly. We're just going to do a little one because I think that that's all that's necessary right now. And basically you're just going to receive. It's kind of like receiving an energy healing. You don't have to do anything. You just be. Shana Asana Isa Pacha Isa Kana Isa La Ushana Asana Isa Kana Asata With every breath that you breathe May you remember the oneness, the one breath of life, of universes, of gateways to other worlds, other stories, to you and all that you are and all that you may be. Thank you everyone. Thank you for being here. Thanks Stephanie. And um, I will see you all in the light. Hold the light, hold the light, hold the light. You are the light.